No surprise that Dick Enberg, who died Thursday at age 82, left us with so much material, books, essays, plays, speeches, lectures and, of course, play-by-play -play calls preserved on audio and video. With all that, it's a bit humbling to come across a simple email the legendary broadcaster sent me in September, now a keepsake, and serves as another example of how his pure joy and restless enthusiasm for his professional life always shined through, even as he was a year into his retirement from working for the San Diego Padres, from, Dickenberg me at gmail.com, date, September 20th, 2017 at 12 hours 55 minutes and 4 seconds PM PDT subject, catching up, Tom, couple things happening in my graduation. I abhor the very thought of retiring. I'm busier than ever, I'm writing a book on my relationship with my baseball idol, Ted Williams. I'm working on a new venture, a weekly podcast, can't give specifics, yet, but my early lineup of guests is eye-popping. And, I'm being inducted into the West Coast Boxing Hall at ALA event on October 15th. We also welcomed our second grandson, Tab Packer, into this crazy world last Friday. Our daughter, Emily, came back from their home in Rwanda for the delivery. And we're trying to finish a family retreat in McCall, Idaho before the next snow hits. Retirement, they gotta be kidding, anyway, hope all is well. Onward and upward. The, the new venture was a podcast called Sound of Success, where he got to reunite with people in his life, to talk about life and their successes. Just a couple of days ago, he was explaining how it came about and what he wanted to achieve with it to the San Diego Union Tribune. He was able to bank about a dozen of those episodes, his voice still so rich and inquisitive and his mind trying to dig for more memories to hold up and embrace. One of the last interviews he did was with CBS Sports President Sean McManus, the son of legendary broadcaster Jim McKay. McManus said in a statement early Friday, there will never be another Dick Enberg. As the voice of generations of fans, Dick was a masterful storyteller, a consummate professional and a true gentleman. His passion, energy and love for the game will surely be missed. Very similar thoughts are echoed today through TV studios, sports stadiums and arenas and college classrooms. To me, Dick Enberg was the greatest all-around sportscaster who ever lived and will never be emulated. He was a very dear friend of mine. He had my respect, admiration and my friendship. He will be sorely missed. Ben Scully picked out Twitter.com slash SFNXOM6, Los Angeles Dodgers at Dodgers December 22, 2017. The book project about Williams is scheduled to land in May. Hopi, the resume of professional broadcasting stops, and the den at his La Jolla home with plaques marking inductions and lifetime achievements only tells one side of his accomplishments. Eight Super Bowl calls from 1981 to 98, and eight more as a reporter, including the first one while working for KTLA Channel 5. More than two dozen calls at Wimbledon. World Series, Rose Bowls, College Basketball Championships, the first Breeders' Cup at Hollywood Park, yet there was that glint in his eyes always as he told you when he was about to get energized by another project, another adventure, another performance of the play he wrote about the life of former broadcast partner Al McGuire, another teachable moment adding to a legacy that went far beyond all that. We were there when he started a new career with the Padres, stopping by Dodger Stadium, and his first thoughts were with donations he wanted to make to the Cal State Northridge baseball team, as he was introduced then to the school's new pitching coach and former Dodger, Tim Leary. When we drove to San Diego just to spend 20 minutes catching up in September 2016, just before his final call with the Padres, he talked about how so much of what was ahead, and finally, a chance to drive up to Angel Stadium, just to Mike Trout. When we saw him being honored at UCLA last February, sitting in with Bill Walton on the broadcast just to have some fun, we heard flashbacks to his old KTLA Channel 5 tape delayed calls that had make during the John Wooden years. When we heard him tell stories about how shows like Sports Challenge and the way we were came into being, the challenge WASNT how sports connected so many dots in his life but how much he could curb his own enthusiasm, thankful for being in that moment, and how he would best translate those stories to the viewers. In 2013, when we attempted to list the top 10 most influential play-by-play -play men in Southern California sports history, it still surprised us how Enberg was an easy choice, even as many by that time knew him only for his network calls at NBC, CBS and eventually ESPN. His time with UCLA basketball, the Angels and Rams was where the groundwork started and his talents noticed across the country. He was as much into LA sports as Van Scully, Tom Kelly, Chick Hearn and Bob Miller. His enthusiasm was infectious and pure, and you trusted that when he used the oh, my, reference. It wasnt a crutch, but it captured an otherwise indescribable moment, and at the same time, made you smile because Enberg was revealing his own wonderment. 
when we put together a piece in the summer of 2015, focused on how Enberg was schooled in baseball from his days at San Fernando Valley State. Now Cal State Northridge is the launching point to where he was named winner of the Ford C. Frick Award, which included a plaque in Cooperstown. We learned two new words that fit him perfectly. Stan Charnovsky, the still-going CSUN professor who had Enberg as his assistant coach on the baseball team from 1962 to 64, remarked that Dick remains a sweet man, someone who's got a great voice, very intelligent, someone who's very Elon, which I've always loved about him. Elon is a French term that means to have style and verve. Enberg recalled how Charnovsky never excused mental errors on the diamond, you could be an average player, but if you played with sagacity, one of Stan's words, then you could win games up here pointing to his head, Enberg said. Sagacity was about having keen perception and judgment. Enberg remembered that forever. At last, there was also that time we finally got to ask him about a brief role in one of our favorite movies, Heaven Can Wait. It was 40 years ago now. He was playing himself, in the Rams' locker room, interviewing a bewildered winning quarterback Warren Beatty who just told that his time on earth was over. Enberg recalled how his sport coat became soaked with champagne as they did about 10 takes inside the actual Coliseum locker room, but he then had to drive to Anaheim to call that night's Angels game. Broadcast partner Don Drysdale couldn't believe how bad Enberg smelled. Enberg said he burned the jacket. He then had the perfect postscript to that story, ASE would have it, the Rams and Steelers did play in a Super Bowl just a year after the film's release, in Southern California, at the Rose Bowl. Was that Hollywood foreshadowing maybe they should have entitled it, Heaven Couldn't Wait. Heaven apparently waited long enough for Enberg. Onward and upward, over the past 10 years, I'd always feel so intrusive calling him to ask him for a few remarks about someone who had just died, Merlin Olson, John Wooden, Dave Niehaus, Bud Collins, Jerry Coleman, but I knew he, as a poet, could always capture that person perfectly and gracie. He was always accommodating, and understood the value of deadlines. It's a lost feeling now, not be able to contact him to ask him to find the words for his own tribute. No matter what humility he might show about all that happened to him in the past, he would have always been looking forward, wanting to get back in the classroom and be challenged by young minds and ideas. And, to be sure, he would punctuate it with a sincere and believable oh, my. From the 1978 movie Heaven Can Wait, with Dick Enberg, Left, and Warren Beatty. Paramount Pictures